Okay, when programming with a Polo Mini Maestro for the first time, start by connecting your Mini Maestro. In this case, I have the USB cable plugged into the Maestro inside this biped robot. Move up and down and right into the computer's USB. As soon as it recognizes that you're going to come up with some boxes, this is going to come up three times. Basically, it's just a screenshot of it. It's just going to be the welcome, found new hardware. And if I remember right, you, uh, yeah. See if we can get you in the picture. You just click the no, not time. You want to automatically install it. Install the software automatically. That was the first one. As I recall, you get to do this a few times. Yep. Next. Install it automatically. It came up with a Microsoft warning thing. Continue anyway. Finish. There should be one more. Okay. You only have to do that the the first time you connect the device, the first time you run the software. So once you've done that and you've already installed the software obviously on your computer, you open the control center for the Mini Maestro and you're going to get a blank page like this. These tabs are different pages different things that you can do and you can drag and pull these out so let's shrink this up a bit since we don't need to see a bunch of blank space let's pull the script down here we're going to need to see that later and the sequence we're going to need to see so let's bring it over here and channel setup will come in handy oops I'm dragging the wrong part I meant to grab channel setup. There we go. Let's make more room for it. So you can get all the things that you're going to need on the screen at one time. Now if you'd happen to uh, start the program first and that plugged in your Mini Maestro you would have to go up here where it says connected to and it's showing numbers because we're already connected. But if you started the, the software first, that wouldn't be there. So you would go here. It would, in fact, it would say not connected. So then you would just come up here and there would only be one number there and you'd select it. Then the program would be collect, connected with the Mini Maestro. Uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is to come in onto the channel settings one and name all the servos or inputs or outputs or whatever you're doing. So they don't have to be servos, you can select other things. It can become an input or it can become an output. But in my case they're all going to be servos. So I named all of the uh, servos starting with the robot's right leg, which as you're looking at would be the left, but it's the robot's right leg. Starting with the foot and then the leg and it went to the left leg and went foot, leg, arms, and eyes. And that's how we signed that. Then I enabled, see the check marks, enabled all those servos. So now if I actually switch the power on on the robot, the, the uh, Maestro, Mini Maestro, was powered by the USB, but the servos, you'd still have to switch your device on. You can kind of hear everything chattering. But... If I take this very first fader up here, see how his foot tips? That's me moving it. I want to find a home place. So you get that foot to set level, then grab the other foot on the other side and get it to set level. And then you can adjust the, the angle of the feet here. that maybe uh, start with the 
Yeah, it's alright for the eyes to start as being green. You can see if you move the uh, one that says arm. I'm going to start with them in the center position. I'm going to call this my home position. So I'm going to hit save frame zero right here. And when I hit that button, it should appear over here. And there it is. There's frame zero. How long that frame runs before it goes to the next frame, you can adjust by double clicking on this. And then you've got your duration in milliseconds. That'd be a half a second. Might be nice if the uh, if the home position ran longer than the next step so that you can tell it apart. That's basically how you go through and program it. Then you would move your servos to whatever position you want them to be in next. When you get everything looking right, hit save frame and it just starts compiling them all up. Then they'll start appearing. When we're all done we'll hit copy sequence to script. That means they'll appear down here. When you hit apply settings that means it'll actually send all that information to the uh, Mini Maestro and it will save all that. So that once you're unconnected from the computer, the robot can then play back and loop play if you select play in, in loop mode. So, here it is. Okay, so once you've written a lot of frames, you know, different sequences you want to perform whatever functions you want, then you want to hit the copy to script and it will take all these frames and copy them as script into this section here and once you hit that then it will ask you to apply settings and once you hit apply settings it then sends all of that information to whatever your project is in this case it sends it up into my mini maestro inside this biped walking robot a few things on uh, writing these individual frames to make life easier in my case, there's a walking sequence, and uh, frame zero is my home frame, which is the way the robot is standing, legs forward, everything in a certain position. Then frame one starts a walking sequence of going forward, and it helps if you write a little bit down on paper as you go, because what you'll find is, in my case, one walking sequence goes from frame one to frame seven that completes basically two feet moving you know from where it starts the foot the next foot and then you're back where you started again so rather than going through all the steps of dragging everything to continue walking if you wanted the robot just to keep walking forward for X period of time you can then reuse what you've already figured out so once you got to frame seven in my case I was then because frame seven and frame one are basically the same I was then able to just hit frame two let me turn the robot on for you there's home position I'm going to click on frame one then say load frame I'm gonna hit it while you're watching and that's my frame one that's where my walking sequence starts then I'm got just clicked on frame two yeah I have a focus problem here Trying to get the camera to focus a little better. We're still on frame two. Now I'm selecting frame three and now I'm hitting load. So now it's in frame three of my walk. Here's frame four. And here's frame five. Here's frame six. <clears throat> and here is frame seven. So that's basically the same leg position and everything that I started with. So at this point, <coughs> I want the robot to keep walking. Rather than starting with frame 8 and designing everything from square 1, all I have to actually do is hit frame 2, hit load, because that would be the next step if it was going to be walking, and then just come over here and say save frame. And it'll save that as your next frame, as frame 8, for example, in, in the progression. And by doing that, you can uh, build up a walking sequence really fast. And when you want the robot to, say, walk backwards, start taking the frames and reloading them in reverse. You can do little things like that to save a lot of time. Here's the sequence that I just programmed.
and now it should start walking backwards. It's the same frames in reverse. And here I just do some different things, blinking the lights at different speeds, moving the arms, and basically signifying that was the end of my program. And now it's just going to repeat the program.